Okay, so here is Photoshop. I've got it launched and this is what the interface basically looks like and I'm going to put it back on the first tool. The um, Photoshop interface is going to be um, a pretty much the same thing between Mac and PC. So right out of the gates here, if you notice I'm using Mac and it's freaking you out, you shouldn't worry too much because you'll be looking at about the same thing on a PC. So um, in fact it should be pretty much identical. The only difference between the two is going to be in the file dialogs. If you've got um, a, a file that you're saving, let's just show you what this looks like real quick. Um, you're gonna see the Windows file dialog instead of the Mac if you're on Windows obviously. That's one difference. That's an operating system thing. And the other difference is that Photoshop for Mac has this application frame which you can turn on and off. Mac applications don't typically do this. They're not usually in a big window. Usually what they do is they've got a um, sort of a transparent background or I don't know if that's the best word but they've got these panels that are floating and you can see your desktop behind it so and in the background there you can see that I'm uploading one of my lectures to YouTube so and there's my there's my desktop so this will be on by default I think uh, if it's not on and you're on a Mac you you can turn that on so you're looking at the same thing I am and I'm gonna leave that on so that it's close as close as possible to the PC version so what I wanna do is just for the uh, basics here to get you get you going is I just wanna walk you through the anatomy and the layout of the program and show you a few basic tools that you'll need for your unity assignment so on the side here this is a toolbar which contains most of the common tools and this has like the move and the marquee for selections that's a magic wand for selections um, and some other tools uh, pencil for drawing paint bucket for paint fill and some other stuff here you don't have to worry about what all these are right now um, but these are your tools up here on the top this is the options bar and this is going to change around according to what tool you have selected so keep your eye on that options bar and make sure you know what options you want because um, that tends to trip up a lot of new users so um, in fact I think my auto select option will be different by default so you're going to be looking at something a little different right there I'll just change it back to the default um, and then up top here, this is just a standard application menu bar with file, edit type stuff, and window and help. We've all seen that kind of stuff. View, that's in most of them. And then it's got some different ones that are specific to Photoshop, like image, layer, type, select, your selection tools, filters. And uh, there's a lot there. Um, Photoshop is a very dense program. It's got a lot of meat and tons of stuff to, to go through. But um, don't worry too much about uh, every little thing that's in these menus. Um, you don't. I'll just show you what you need to deal with for now and you can expand later. Uh, over here there's a thing that says essentials or hope, should say essentials hopefully. Um, if it doesn't say essentials what you're looking at is probably a little different than mine but this is your workspace and I usually just stick to essentials especially um, when I'm teaching uh, students on the basics of Photoshop and this is just um, showing you the basic tools now what these workspaces are they're gonna show different tools and they're gonna bring up different panels the workspaces don't have anything special about them other than it's just for convenience. If you switch workspaces for example to painting you get a color palette and you get some brush presets and you get a brush tool over here and things like that. If you switch to typography you get tools that relate to setting text. Now all of these tools that you see in every one of these uh, workspaces 
is available all the time. This is just showing you different panels. Um, it's not like I can't get to the typography tools when I'm on the Essentials workspace. They all can be accessed with the window command here, with the window menu. You can see I've got my, here's my brush, we saw that in the painting. Um, here's your character styles, that's one of the typography settings and paragraph and paragraph styles. Those are also for your typography and your text. So it's all there. Um, it's just hiding and showing different stuff. The panels that you see on the sides here as well as the toolbar, these can all be rearranged and you can basically do whatever you want with these. If you've got, um, over time you might develop a workflow that is more suited to your style. And you can take these panels and just grab them by the tab where they have the name and you can tear them off as they say. That's what they call it. You call it tearing the panels off. And they can be rearranged any way you want. Let's say I don't want swatches. I can get rid of that. And uh, let's say for styles, I, I don't want styles. I can tear that off. And the, the close button to get rid of it, that's just that little X on there. You can close it with that button. Uh, adjustments, maybe I want adjustments, let's leave that out. And layers, you're going to always want layers. There's tons of layer stuff to learn. Um, channels and paths, maybe I don't want that. So just for an example here. Um, so let's say these are my three panels and this is kind of my workspace. Um, you, can, you can work like that and remember all that stuff that I closed, um, one of the things I closed, for example, was channels. I can open that right back up. So nothing has gone away. It's all still there. And these can actually be docked together by dragging them. You'll notice they kind of jump uh, or snap, as it were. And if you actually move up a little more, what will happen is the bottom of that panel that you're docking with will turn blue and the one you, you've you got a hold of will kind of turn semi-transparent. Um, that means they're about to merge together and they're going to become one. So if I let that up then I've got one panel now with color and adjustments in it and I can do the same thing with layers. I can snap it to that panel or I can actually merge it with that panel. So now I've got one panel with color adjustments and layers. So um, if that's what you're into, that's stuff you can do. And you can also mess up your workspace for a, a good amount of fun. You can close all these panels. And I know that the buttons are really small. Adobe um, over the years had to evolve to accommodate um, laptops and their answer to that was these workspaces that you see and making the buttons really really tiny so um, sorry for you you guys who have uh, old eyes I apologize but that's just the way Adobe Creative Suite is um, but I'm gonna close all these panels and we're gonna get really confused and we're gonna say oh no what happened how did I how did I break Photoshop well you didn't break it you just closed all your panels and a really easy way to kind of get back to familiar territory is just go back up here to your workspaces where it says essentials and just go to reset essentials and that's gonna change it back to the default that we started with also if you do end up with a workspace over time that is more suitable to your flow you can always save that as your own workspace and that's something that more advanced users do, more like power users who are real ninjas. So you'll get there. It'll take some time, but don't worry about it. You'll get there. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just start a new file, which I did earlier. And um, uh, before I do that, actually, I would like to go to my Arts 102 course and I want to go to the content section real quick and I just want to show you under optional content here there's a Photoshop cheat sheet. I recommend grabbing this cheat sheet here and print this out 
and maybe tape it to your monitor or just keep it nearby when you're working. The best is to tape it to your monitor and this will give you all of your commonly used shortcut keys. This is not an extensive list at all. The extensive list is a small book, but this is the common shortcut keys that you're going to use in this class and for most of your average everyday Photoshop use. This is written for Mac. Um, by the time we run this course, I don't know if I'll have one for PC or not. If I, or, But the only difference anyway is just if you're not a PC user then, or I'm sorry, if you're not a Mac user, then all of these little clovers are probably kind of meaningless to you. These signify the command key. And the command key is just the same thing as the control key on PC. So you, where you see the command C for copy, that's going to become control C for copy. And as it says down here on the bottom, on PC, substitute control for a command. That is the only difference. So the, these are all the same shortcut keys on both. So you don't have to stress too much over that. Um, let's go back to Photoshop and let's start a new file by clicking File New or you can use the shortcut key of Command N. Um, as time goes on I'm going to use the shortcut keys a little more but for now I'll just stick to the menus so hopefully it'll be as easy as possible and this is what a f new file dialog box looks like and it's going to start off on the default Photoshop size and that's going to be fine for what we're doing for now um, you can name it right here we don't need to save this but you can name it so I can call it like Thor demo whatever you want to call it and by default we've got a width of 7 inches and a height of 5 inches 72 pixels per inch on resolution um, what resolution is we'll talk about uh, in a little bit more detail later but um, essentially it's how many pixels exist per inch of this document so 72 might seem like a weird number but actually 72 is the resolution of all electronic devices it's a very strange number I don't know why it's 72 but your your monitor your HD TV your um, your cell phones any web pages any kinda anything that lives in a screen has a resolution of 72 pixels per inch so I don't I don't get the number but that's the number um, color mode is going to be we're just going to leave it on RGB that just means basically it's in color and this stuff don't worry about it too much background contents is just pretty you know if you want it to start white background or black background or whatever your current background color is uh, or just a transparent background you can do that I'm just going to use white but just letting you know this stuff is there and this is nothing to worry about right now so we're just going to click OK and what we're looking at now is basically just a blank canvas. This is a blank document. And in terms of the Unity assignments, you really only need a couple of tools. What you're being asked to do is um, create some squares and arrange them in a way that communicates tension, increase, and order. And in order to do that, um, I just need to show you a couple of tools over here on the side. And the first one is this shape tool right here. This is on a square usually when you start. It's right under the black arrow that says path selection tool. Um, and that is the rectangle tool. So you know what I just realized I skipped something. I'm gonna turn on the rectangle tool and we'll come right back to that but I wanted to talk about preferences before I started getting into the tools so let me real quick backtrack a little bit here and let's take a look at the preferences now this is also one of very few things I promise very few things that that is in a different place on the PC um, under Mac you've got your Apple menu and you've got next to that you've got a Photoshop menu this is not here on a PC but under Photoshop um, on Mac you this is where you would get to your preferences on PC I believe it's under the edit menu um, maybe at the bottom if I'm not mistaken if it's not there you can just press control K like I said before there's your shortcut key to get to preferences command K so that means on a PC it's just control K 
And I'm just going to go to the general preferences first. I'm going to start there. And we're going to take a look at a couple of things that I want you to um, that I want you to set. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what these preferences are. And if you would like to know that, you can you can go um, look up a YouTube video or um, an Adobe TV video. But what I want to do is I want to set a couple of these preferences. Um, I think zoom with scroll wheel will be off by default. You want to leave that off. That's confusing. Zoom click to point to center. Leave that off. Make sure that one's off. And the next one, this one's really big. Enable flick panning. Really, really definitely leave that off. It's terrible. So you want to make sure that one's turned off. This one will be on by default. You'll be looking at a checked box there. Turn it off. Um, let's see. The rest of these are fine. We're going to leave them as uh, their defaults. And I'm going to kind of go through these different categories over here. Let's go down to the next tab where it says interface. And I'm just going to take a look. Tool tips should be on. If it's not, go ahead and turn it on. And gestures, I'm not sure if that'll be on or off. It's probably best to just leave that off for now. The um, gestures are kind of an advanced thing, and we're not going to get into that. So just turn that off. Um, documents as tabs, auto show hidden panels. OK, that'll be fine. Um, OK, full screen. All right, that's all fine. So file handling, next one down. Image previews should be on always save by default, and we're going to save an icon and a Windows thumbnail. In other words, that means for Mac and PC. Um, a pen file extension always use lowercase, and we don't want to have to type in the file extensions. Um, the rest of these are fine on default. Um, let's see. Maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility. I'm not sure if this is on ask or always by default. If it's on ask, change it to always. So basically, that will ask you a question every time you save a file. And it's just a silly question. And it, it says, do you want to maximize com um, compatibility between versions? If you do see that question, just say yes. It's, it's pretty much just. Uh, let's confuse newbies question. That's all it is. Doesn't really matter whether you say yes or no, but say yes. Uh, performance. Let's take a look at your memory usage. Um, hopefully, my RAM is a little bit on the low end, but it, it is plenty. So hopefully, you've got um, at least this much. Uh, if you don't, it's not necessarily a crisis, but your your Photoshop might run a little slower. And where I've got my RAM slider, that's going to be fine. If you've got a nice, beefy computer that's got lots of RAM, you can crank this up and get some performance out of it. The scratch disks are like temporary disks where you can... Uh, where Photoshop handles those. You don't do anything with them. But what it does is it's just writing temporary files and stuff. By, by default, your main hard drive will be the first scratch disk. The next one down will be, if you've got any other hard drives, they'll be listed here. And you can use more than one scratch disk if you want to. It just improves performance a little bit. And it helps to, um, if, you need a, if you're working on a very large file, it's got to write information. It's got to write out swap data. So um, the default's probably fine. But if you've got extra hard drives on your computer, you can use those. There's a history and cache that I want you to take a look at because the history states are probably not on 50 by default and I find that new students are most comfortable with a larger amount of history states so you can crank that up to 50 and if you got more RAM you want to crank it up to 100 then go for it um, event that which is really more history states than are necessary honestly um, but like I said new students seem to be most comfortable with a large amount of history states so we can leave the rest of those at default and I'll just take a quick look at the rest of these so that you've seen them under uh, the next tab down is cursors and 
painting cursors, we can leave that as normal brush tip. That just gives you like a circle for the size of your painting cursor or whatever shape it is. And other cursors, I just leave it as standard. If you want the precise cursor, which is a crosshair, um, you don't even really have to set it here. Anytime you want to look at this cursor instead of the standard cursor, you can just press the caps lock key and it'll appear as a crosshair. So I just stick with standard and when I want to switch them I just hit the caps lock key. So Transparency and gamut, the defaults are fine on that. Units and rulers, um, the defaults are fine but I just kind of wanted to show you what this is. Rulers by default is set to inches and more often than not you want pixels but I usually just change it manually. The uh, column size is fine. Print resolution is typically 300 pixels per inch. So, um, and, and like I said, screen resolution is always 32 pixels per inch. You can get away with a lower print resolution and higher is nice, but screen resolution never changes. So, um, and the rest of these, let's see, guides and grids, that's fine. We can just leave that. Um, plugins is fine and text is fine and 3D we don't even deal with in this class so um, just click OK and there you go those are your preferences and like I said if you want to go into more detail about that feel free to look something up so back to the shape tool this is again we've got the shape tool it's already turned on and I want to talk about these options up here again and you always want to take a look at these before you just start dragging stuff and, and making stuff. The options should be on, the first option should be on shape by default. If it's on path or pixels, you're not going to get the same result. We just want to stick to shape for now. And the fill color for this assignment will be black. So you can also use a white fill color and you can actually draw the negative space which creates uh, a whole lot of interesting compositions and I'd like you to at least give it a shot try it but these are the only two colors you're going to use on this assignment straight black and straight white um, stroke is an outline we don't need it for what we're doing right now but that's what it's there for that little red slash that just means that there is no stroke and then this point size this is the size of that outline okay and uh, the rest of these are not really a big deal right now. Um, this one is the style of the outline. The width and height you can you can set here, but we're just going to click and drag anyway. So we don't need to worry about the rest of those options, but these first couple are really the, the important ones right now. Now let's just um, point anywhere at the canvas. You'll get this little crosshair, and if you click and drag, you'll end up with a square and when you do this when you let up you've got a shape it's a filled black square okay now let me draw your attention over here to the layers panel there is now a layer above the background called rectangle one so now we need to start talking about layers what's going on here is basically your background is kind of like your canvas your base um, document um, you can think of it as a piece of paper or a canvas or whatever you want and think of if you want to pretend you're looking down at a, an imaginary desk with a camera so to speak then you've got like an exact 90 degree angle pointing down the layers above it are like perfectly clear sheets of tracing paper and anything in those layers can be kind of manipulated individually so I've got one layer and it's this black square if I turn on my move tool then when I click and drag it obviously it moves it around the move tool won't work on the background layer it's just the background layer it doesn't let you do anything with it so that's my move tool and the layer here is sitting on top of the white background so let's turn the shape tool back on and what I want to do is make another square but this time I want you to hold down shift 
see how I've got that little plus next to my plus? Now I've got an exact square. It won't let me make a rectangle. So if I let it up, I can make a rectangle. But if I'm holding down shift, it's forcing me to make an exact square. Oh, I screwed that up. I'm sorry. I'm just going to leave that. Um, what I did was I added a shape to the same layer. I didn't mean to do that. That If I start with shift, it adds a shape to the same layer. Um, what I wanted to do was get a different layer, but I'll just leave it for now. I'll show you what that did. Basically, now my layer is two of the same thing. It's got um, two objects in it instead of just one, so I can't manipulate these individually now. So, but anyway, that shift key, I wanted to talk about what that does. I'll just, uh, I'll do it one more time. Um, you don't have to start with the shift key. What I'll do is I'll just start by clicking and dragging so I actually get a new layer. So I'm just going to click and drag, and then, like I said, it'll let you make a rectangle, but if I press shift, if I press it after the fact, then it'll constrain me. That's what the shift key does. The shift is one of two modifier keys. Um, the other one is alt. The shift key constrains your proportions. And basically, it works on any, both of them, shift and alt, they work on any tool that you click and drag with. So if I'm making a square, it's going to if I've got the rectangle tool on, if I hold down shift, it's going to make a square. And when I let up, now that's a perfect square. I mean, this one's pretty close, and I'm not going to get a microscope out and mark you down if it's not an exact square, so don't get me wrong. But I'm just letting you know that the tool is there. Okay, so, and again, as you can see, since I didn't start with the shift key, I've got another layer. I've got now three layers of the background, the rectangle one, and the rectangle two this layer has two squares in it, this one and this one. So this brings me back to the move tool once again and as you can see in the layers panel I've got the second um, layer selected which is called rectangle one and that is this layer. I'm going to grab it and move it and that makes sense but what a lot of students expect to happen is if they click on this object here they think they're gonna grab it and start moving it but lo and behold that doesn't happen why isn't that happening that's ha that's not happening because this is the layer that's selected the move tool works on the layer that's selected it's not visual it's using this over here as your selection so I've got these two objects which are on re the rectangle one layer selected. Now if I want to change that up here in my options to something that is a little more intuitive you can turn on auto select and change this group to layer. <clears throat> and this will work in a way that actually feels a little bit more intuitive. If I click on that object and move it then I've got that layer selected but if I click on this one and move it it actually selects a different layer for me. It actually changed my selection over here. So if I again click on this one, you can see now my selection, uh, my layer selection has moved down. And if I click on this one, now it's moved back up. So that might be something that you want to turn on um, to make the move tool perform in a little bit more intuitive way. Um, you don't need it if you want to leave it off and select the layers manually with the move tool. <clears throat> that's fine too and that's probably what I'll do because it helps you make, become more conscious of layers and that's just something that you're going to need to comprehend for um, true Photoshop ninjadom. So when you learn how to use the layers that's when Photoshop really becomes more than just a paint program. The show transform controls I actually want you to leave that off. I want you to use the transform separately from the move tool. So <clears throat> speaking of which, why don't we talk about that now? 
The transform is, in fact, um, it's going to let you squash, stretch, and rotate stuff. So the way to get to that is um, I like to use the shortcut key, which is Command-T or Control-T on a uh, PC. And it brings up this little box around your object. As you can see, it's surrounded now by eight very small boxes. And if I point my cursor at them, I get these different cursors. What this is doing is basically um, just waiting for you to stretch it. And if you grab, for example, the left edge, you can stretch it, make it longer, or you know, squish it in, make it tall. And if you grab the corner, then you can stretch both the height and width at the same time. Now again, this is a tool that we're clicking and dragging with, so the shift key can be used again to constrain proportions. So you can see it's staying as a square. Now don't be confused, this doesn't mean the shift key makes your rectangle a square. No, that's not what it does. If it starts as a rectangle, it's going to constrain the proportions and keep the same type of rectangle. This is something to really be aware of when you're um, working with photos because a lot of Photoshop newbies will plop, plop a photo into their composition and then they'll stretch it or they'll squash it and that just looks dumb it looks bad so don't do that when you come out of the edges a little bit with this tool active you get this sort of curved cursor and this is how you rotate the object. You, As you can see I can click and drag and rotate the object and once again look at that we're talking about a click, click and drag function again so again shift key constrains proportions it will keep it constrained to 15 degree angles if you're holding down the shift key if you want an exact um, kind of rotation. And then if I let it up, then it'll let me do it freely. Okay? So, the transform tool basically squashes, stretches, rotates. It can also be used to move the object as well. You can just move it. That's the basic idea behind the transform tool. This tool is one of a couple that, um, or maybe a few more than a couple, maybe one of a few that you have to either commit or discard the changes that you made. And this is something that is um, liable to trip you up if you're a total newbie to Photoshop. When you turn on a tool that you have to commit or discard your changes, then what's going to happen is it's not going to let you do anything with that file. It's not going to let you save or, well, it'll at least ask if you want to apply or don't apply the transformation. It's going <clears> to <throat> um, not let you turn on any other tools or anything like that. You have to you have to choose one of these before you can move on. So. I'm going to go ahead and commit that. That's the check mark. Obviously, this is the discard. So, commit it. And now we can continue. So, if I turn my square tool back on, um, this is a little confusing. If I select a color, what I'm doing is I'm selecting a color for the one that's selected instead of the next one I'm going to draw. And it's confusing because the brush tool works the opposite way. You you lay a brush stroke down and it's the color that it is. It's like the paint dried, I guess. And then <clears throat> when you change the color, you're actually um, changing the color for future brush strokes. With the, with the shape tool, you're changing the color of an existing shape if you have one selected. So I can take this and as I said I can kind of draw the negative space and it makes for some very interesting effects if you try putting a white box over top of some of the black boxes there's some interesting things you can do with the figure ground relationship and I'd like you to explore some of that for the assignment. Um, 
One more thing to show, and that's just kind of how to navigate your document here. Um, let's take a look at the navigator under window. Right here there's this thing that says navigator, and you might even leave this open if you feel inclined. Let's actually tear it off and set it to the side a little bit here. This will allow you to zoom in and zoom out and it will also allow you to pan around the document assuming you, you're zoomed in far enough that it goes beyond the boundaries of your screen. Um, this panning, don't be confused, you're not moving anything in the document. What you're doing is, remember that camera angle I mentioned where you're, it's like you're pointing straight down at a desk? What you're doing is you're actually moving the camera. You're actually changing your perspective and this red box is showing you the, the bit of the document that you're actually looking at. And this is just how you zoom in and out, and this is how you pan the document. This is not the only way to do this, but um, it's sort of an easy starter way. In Adobe Creative Suite, it is very typical that there are a dozen or more different ways to do the same thing. So if you've got different tools that you've found that do the same thing you don't need to really worry about it it's not really a right or wrong answer kind of thing it's just a matter of getting the the results that you wanted and communicating effectively with your designs so um, let's go back to the d2l site and I'm gonna return to my content section and I just wanted to show you real quick the template that you're going to be working with. You're going to go to the Unity. That won't be a draft when you get there because you'll actually be able to see it. And there's this thing that says Unity Template. You want to click on that and you want to download it. And some browsers will open this right straight into Photoshop and other browsers will not. It just depends. Safari will open it right straight into Photoshop. If your browser doesn't open it right into Photoshop, um, you will have to either say File Open and navigate to your Downloads folder and grab it, or you can go to your Downloads window in your um, in your browser and you can just double click the thing. So, a couple different ways to do it. And basically, this is where you'll make the seven compositions times three files equals 21 compositions for this assignment. Um, you could think of these smaller compositions as what we call thumbnails. And the larger composition is sort of the best one, in a sense. So um, they're black squares. You know, that's, I get it. It's not really anything to beat yourself up over, so don't worry about it too much. But the idea is just that you've, um, you've got a workflow that I'm trying to establish. You kind of make some sketch ideas, and then you make a main idea from one of those sketches. You develop your ideas. Um, you will have the best work um, if you are willing to spend some time developing it and pondering the problem and doing some rough drafts. Uh, the other thing actually, just if you don't mind just turning on the text tool and you can really just use any font that you want that's sensible and legible and <clears throat> under category here just click down there and let me know what we're looking at and the rest of the class. Let, so if we're doing order, then you know we'll say this category is order. You know, don't worry if that's perfect. You don't have to beat yourself up over text effects and all kinds of crazy cool stuff. You don't need to make it all fancy. We'll learn more about the text tool in the next unit. So um, when you're done with this and you've got all your compositions ready, let's pretend this is done. Uh, you're going to do a save as and you're going to save this to wherever you want to save it. I'll just I'll put it on my desktop. I wouldn't really put everything on my desktop in real life, but let's just put it on the desktop and I'm I I have a file name that I want you to follow that um, let me make sure I get this right. 
let's go to the assignment directions and the uh, thing is loading there we go so your name order or tension or increase this one's order so this would be called Thor Teague order you're gonna save that and then you're gonna upload it to the Dropbox and you're gonna post it on the discussion forum along with your self-analysis that's kinda of the flow that we're gonna follow so that's the that's the plan for basically the whole semester here so hopefully that makes sense and definitely always post if you have any questions no problem at all and like I said I might move some questions to the forum I will do so anonymously if I do uh, just because it will it's likely to be something that another student is wanting to know as well um, otherwise have fun and see you soon